Hey everyone, my name is Nikki with Curiosity Quills Press and today I'm doing the Harry Potter spell book tag. Technically, I did not get invited to do this because this is our first ever booktube. Yes. And it's also the launch of our new site and it's Harry Potter's birthday, so I figured why the heck not. First spell, Expecto Patronum is a childhood book that brings back good memories and it is and forever my friend will be The Hobbit. I got this book from my dad when I was in like the third or fourth grade and it's I uh, just if you have not read this book even if you've seen the movie and you have not read this leave this booktube right now just go read it that's all I can tell you read this book it's flipping amazing I love it. Spelliamus a spell that took you by surprise. This book is actually Seventh Son Descent by J.C. Hutchins for me. Um, I met J.C. Hutchins last year at Alternate Reality Gaming Fest Seattle, so it's actually signed, which is kind of cool, but I had never heard of this book before in my life. I kind of just got it while I was there, and I really don't want to tell you guys anything about it either because I think that's part of the magic of this book. But let me just, just to give you like a teaser, read the first two sentences of this book. <clears throat> the President of the United States is dead. He was murdered in the morning sun by a four-year-old boy. Boom! Mind blown! Two sentences into the prologue. That's insane. I just, that's all I'm going to say, but I love this book. You should check it out. J.C. Hutchins, Seventh Son of Scent. Yes. Prior Incantanto is the last book you've read, and technically I don't have a print for that because I read it on my Kindle, uh, but it is Opal by Jennifer Armentrout, and it's of the Lux series. Holy shit. This book is... I love this series. I read all three of uh, Obsidian and Onyx and Opal in two days this weekend. And I don't... Sorry, I don't think this is a spoiler, but... I don't read alien books. I just don't. I really don't dig them, and I never really get into them. And I just kind of picked this up on a whim, and I freaking love it. It's There's some, you know, little plot things or whatever, but the main character, Katie, is a book blogger, and she's obsessed with books, and I just think that that's freaking awesome. Um, so it's super relatable. It's really cute. Nothing too serious. You know, pick it up. Check it out sometime. Jennifer Armentrout. Sorry, I don't have the book with me. Um... Alohomora is a book that introduced you to a genre that you maybe before wouldn't have considered. This technically isn't um, a book, but it's graphic novels. Um, Saga, I had never really got into graphic novels. Uh, it was always books for me. And um, my friend had the first, you know, copy of Saga, um, first trade, and I just kind of picked it up one day when I was bored. And I've got all of them so far now, and the, the fourth one's coming out really soon, and I can't freaking wait. Uh, they're really good. Just check them out. Give them a chance. Um, they're really weird and I like that a lot about it. Ridiculous is a funny book you've read and this is actually a book that we publish um, by Amy Fecto. It's Real Vampires Don't Sparkle. The title already like won me over. It's the first book I ever worked on actually at Curiosity Quills Press um, and I just it's hilarious. The It's about vampires, obviously, but she doesn't actually use the word vampires in here once. Like, literally none, except for in the title. And I think that's awesome. But the the sassiness and the snark of the main character and even the, the kind of side characters are just... They're epic. The sass drips from every single sentence, and it's just... I laughed, like, the entire book through, so I'd check it out. In Fecto, Real Vampires Don't Sparkle. Sixth is Sonorous. Sorry, I don't know how to say that one. Sonorous. And it's a book you think everyone should know about. And as I was getting this all set up, I realized that I actually gave that book to my friend like last week. But I have the sequel to it. Um, the book is Ender Shadow. This is Shadow of the Giant. It is like the brother series of the Ender's Game series. And obviously everyone knows Ender's Game and they've probably seen the movie by now. Um, and Ender Shadow kind of got like... <laughs> like sucked into Ender's Game movie, which I really desperately hated. Um, but seriously, read Ender's Shadow and Shadow of the Giant because I think they're better. I really do. I love Bean. I love the story. And I really think people should give more to them and not just Ender's Game. Anywho.
Obliviate is a book or spoiler that you wish you could forget about having read. And that is a controversial opinion, um, but it's divergent, actually. And I don't get me wrong, I love this book. I, I love it. But it just kind of went downhill for me really fast, and Allegiant is like the bane of my existence. And it's, you know what, I'm not going to give any spoilers right now, but for those of you who have read it, the thing at the end that everyone hates and they say that's why it's a bad book, that, you know, that, that thing... That's not even why. No, I didn't love it, but that's not even, that didn't ruin it for me. That's not the reason. The plot was weird. It didn't answer anything. There was no conclusion. There's so many questions and plot holes that made zero sense at the end. I was just furious. So unfortunately, I'm sorry, Veronica Roth. I really loved this book and I feel like Divergent could have gone in such a beautiful direction for a series, but you killed it for me and I wish I hadn't read it so I didn't have to cry every time I thought about its lost potential. <sighs> seriously emotional drained. Imperio is a book that you had to read for school, and this is actually another controversial one, but it's Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Um, I, I cried the day that J.D. Salinger died because of this book. I mean, I love all of his books, but everyone hates this book, and they hate having to have read it, but I just, it spoke to me for some reason, and I love Holden Caulfield, even though he's kind of a douche. I love him, and I still make jokes about people and call them phony because of this book. Um, just give it a chance. Like, I know you have to read it for school, and that sucks, and it kind of ruins it. Or if you read it in school, like, years and years and years ago, you're, like, rolling your eyes at me. Just try it with an open mind, even if you've already read it once, because I adore it, and I think it's awesome. Number nine is also really controversial. Apparently I'm full of those today. Um, and I don't even have the print for it, and I'm super glad I don't because I hated it. Um, and it's Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. And I know that this book, don't get me wrong, this has like a quadrillion awards and nominations and the shiny gold labels and everything. And Kate Atkinson, your writing is beautiful. You, your writing skill is impeccable. And I, this means nothing to you as an author. But I just couldn't do it. I just could not get into it. And I finished it. I made myself read like all whatever 300 pages or whatever it was. Because I was in a book club and they recommended it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Never went back to that book club again. Because I really liked the beginning of this book. And I was like, yeah, this book club's going to rock. And everyone was commenting and they were saying how great it was. Because they were ahead of me reading it. And they were like, it's magnificent. Mer, mer, mer. They didn't actually meow. Um, so I kept reading it, thinking it was going to get better, and it was going to get better, and it was like, cool, awesome start, and it just, meow, 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 meow. It just died. It killed my soul, like, a little bit inside, because I hated it the whole way through, and I still read it. And speaking of killers, the last is number 10, Avada Kedavra, and that is a book that could kill... Interpret it as you will. So, I have interpreted it as the Lord of the Rings trilogy and its spanking new box set. Uh, this series slash books could kill for a couple of reasons. Um, actually three. One, I may physically kill someone if they say that they don't like this series. Just maybe. Kind of. Um, two, I could do that because it could physically kill someone if I threw this at your head. Could theoretically kill you. And three, because these stories just kind of, they are killer in a way. Um, and I don't mean like the bang bang kind. I mean, uh, Tolkien's writing is beautiful, but it's so descript sometimes that it's just really sometimes like wading through mud to get through because he'll have songs that are several pages long. And if you read every single word of Tolkien, that kind of stuff just kind of slows you down and wears on you a little bit. Um... Stephen Colbert is probably going to like come out of the woodwork from my saying this right now, but if you really want to read it and you just can't get through things like that, just skip the song. Skip that kind of crap. If you can skip a paragraph and know exactly what's going on still and not have missed anything, then just do that every once in a while, as long as you finish the series and appreciate it. Um, because it is kind of, it is a killer a little bit. It's very descript. Um, makes George R. R. Martin look like a children's author with picture books in comparison. Um... So yeah, those are my 10 tags. I hope you enjoyed them. I nominate Vicki Lay and Mara Alderon to do their own, and I uh, will see you next time. Okay.